Hey, welcome to the 7 out of 10 short report, a brief weekly roundup of the Damien headlines you might have missed. Time Splitters, the first person shooter series by GoldenEye and Perfect Dark alumni Free Radical Design, that enjoyed relative success in the early to late 2000s, has been purchased by Tot Media. Yeah, the series, which has long been on ice since Free Radical Design was bought by Crytek in 2009 after both the critical and commercial failure of their PS3 exclusive Hayes and the translation of the then in development Star Wars Battlefront 3 by LucasArts, has remained a fan favourite in the interim since, despite there being seemingly no interest from publishers in creating a sequel. Until now, that is. Thanks to the deal, Toth Media now have the rights to both create new instalments in the series as well as re release old entries. It sounds likely that plans are already in the works, too, with the company stating that they have many fans of the Time Splitters series among our own staff who are passionate about creating a product that will thrill today's Damien audience. There's a high chance that a HD re release of Time Splitters 2 could be on the cards, especially seeing as a slightly tuned up version of the game's opening levels appeared in 2016's Homefront The Revolution as an Easter egg, arguably the best part of that awful, awful game. Interestingly, Free Radical, which rebranded to Tritech UK after the merger in 2009, were also purchased by Toth Media and rebranded again as Deep Silver Dambuster Studios in 2014. It's unclear how many of the original team remain at Dambusters today, but it's nice to think that the Time Splitters series is returning into the hands of those who were responsible for previous entries in the series. The deal also included the rights to Seth and Sight, an underappreciated gem from the PS2 era that revolved around the use of Telekinesis powers. I'm not kidding when I say it was underappreciated. I Either. Seth and Sight was this really fun, narrative-driven, third-person action-adventure game that it was just so unique and interesting, and it really showed that Free Radical had a lot more depth to them as a development studio, other than making games about like monkeys shooting each other in the face. Also, it was one of those weird games that came out at the same time as something really similar to it, and that was PsyOps, and I would just like to say right now for the record that PsyOps was shite and Seth and Sight was better, and I will don't at me, alright? I'll die by that. I've had that opinion since I was like 13 years old, I should probably get over it. After teasing the game all the way back in March via a um, cryptic tweet, Blizzard have this week confirmed that their hugely popular dungeon crawl em up Diablo 3 will be coming to the Nintendo Switch this year. The announcement, which was done via a video that can only be described as Pete Nintendo. Hello Mike, it's nice to hear from you. Nice to see you again too Reggie. I had a present delivered for you. Mike. Do you know how many of these I have? Reveal that the game will feature all content paths released for the game so far on other systems, the inclusion of local co-op play, will run at 60fps both docked and in handheld mode, and will even come bundled with some exclusive Zelda duddies, including the ability to play Zelda baddie Ganondorf. The game only took 9 months to develop, which is a hugely impressive feat, and it seems the process has got Blizzard thinking about the possibility of porting other properties to the platform too. Speaking to Damespot, Blizzard senior producer Pete Stilwell stated that the task of porting popular hero shooter over Overwatch to the system was feasible. He stated, quote, Yes, it is feasible. Anything is within the realm of possibility. Our team was given the task to work on this. If Overwatch developer Team 4 pits up that endeavour, that's on them. As of right now, Diablo is our only focus on the Switch. Bad news for fans of Little Purple Boys as the Spiral Reignited trilogy has been delayed until November. Originally set to release on the 21st of September, the game has been pushed back in order to allow developer Toys for Bob to divot some additional love and care. Concerns have been raised recently following the announcement that the physical disc of the game would only include the original Spiral the Dragon, with its sequels requiring a separate download in order to be played, with fans speculating that the lack of footage surfacing from the latter titles in the trilogy indicative of a slipping deadline. Although disappointing a delay is always a sure sign that a problematic development process is being dealt with accordingly. I'm personally looking forward to the game, and I'm happy to hear that the finished version will be the best it can be. Sadly, this does mean that Elijah Wood's Steel Sona will be locking horns with Fallout 76 and the Switch's first Pokemon game, both of which are launching the same week in November. Still, if the popularity of the Crash Bandicoot remasters is anything to go by, this probably won't affect sales too much. Oh, it's time for a rumour report, which is, you know, a, it's a rumour, so take it with a pinch of salt, I guess. New Super Mario Bros. U may be coming to the Nintendo Switch. That's according to famous Twitter rumorino and video game historian Liam Robertson. Hey, that's really close to my name. Reporting for Tomitbook.com, my close namesake cited the same sources responsible for the early reveal of Mario and Rabbids Tinned in Battle, who claimed that the game and its Luigi-themed expansion path will be re-released on Nintendo's new handheld system this year. The game, which may be called New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe on the Switch, enjoyed a fairly positive critical reception when it was originally released on the Wii U back in 2012. Personally, I thought it was pretty shit, but like the string of other Wii U ports that have made their way to the Switch, like Hyrule Warriors, 
characters, Tapped and Toad and Mario Kart 8, it made a lot of sense for the game to eventually make its way over to a console that people actually own. Just hurry up and port Mario Mate and Ninty, alright? Cheers. Well that's it for this week, thank you for watching. This is a little bit different to the stuff I've been doing, but I used to report on gaming news all the time when this channel was called Damon Nation and our website would get thousands of hits a day, and I miss it. I miss being involved in the news cycle, I miss just giving my small tape on the, you know, most recent headlines of the week. So if you like this, give us a like, give it a share, and of course subscribe. Subscribing... Ugh. Subscribing? I can say that word properly. Subscribing helps the channel, so please do click that subscribe button, whack that bell, which, uh, I don't really know what it does. Whack the bell. Oh, fucking hell. Why can't I just say bye like a normal person? Thanks.